Hi, I'm gonna try something new this week. There's always so much health news to talk about. I'm gonna try to consolidate everything and deliver the news to you that I think you need to hear, um, something you might find interesting. Um, and this is my first go at it. So, we'll, you know, we'll see. You can let me know how you think I did and if it's useful. In terms of health news, I'll be bringing you the good, the bad, and right now, of course, the spotty. Um, the measles vaccine debate uh, continues to wage kind of furious, furiously, and cases are cropping up throughout the entire United States. Year to date, there have been about 141 cases across 17 states, mostly linked to that initial outbreak in Disneyland about six weeks ago. And now scientists are looking at an outbreak in the Philippines and thinking that's what started the whole thing for us here in the U.S. So that'll be interesting to follow. Now, the vast majority of people who are infected were unvaccinated. So please remember, babies cannot be vaccinated until they are a year old and they're extremely vulnerable. So if you have not been vaccinated, please try to stay away from the very young and the very old, especially if there's a chance you were exposed. And if you're on the fence about getting your children vaccinated, please hop off to the side of common sense and just do it. Vaccines save lives and it's our responsibility to kind of keep them going. Now there's a lot of news about another contagious disease in the media. It's got everybody buzzing. Two people died at UCLA's uh, Ronald Reagan Medical Center. It's from a, what we call super bug. Um, commonly, this one is called CRE, mostly because no one can pronounce its name. But in addition to those two people, about a set 179 more people may have been exposed. Now, super bugs get their heroic status by being uh, resistant to antibiotics and therefore being incredibly difficult to treat. We largely blame the overuse of antibiotics for the evolution of superbugs. So please do your part and don't beg for an antibiotic or ask for one when you really don't need one. CRE, by the way, is very difficult to catch. So don't be looking into quarantining your kids just yet. We'll just have to keep an eye on this one. Now we're about midway through Heart Health Month um, and it looks like the recommendations about the cholesterol we eat are changing. Experts no longer think that the cholesterol in our food is that bad for us as we've thought for you know, all these years. Um, instead, they're encouraging us to focus on a diet low in saturated fats and sugar. Now, cholesterol is commonly found in foods like shellfish and eggs. If you haven't gotten your cholesterol checked in a while, there is no time like the present to make an appointment with your doctor. And despite new guidelines, please don't start overdoing it on lobster omelets and shrimp quiche just yet. Um, you know, everything in moderation, and that's always been the tried and true, ongoing, proven nutritional way to stay healthy. Moderation is key. So sleep is making serious headlines. Turns out we are in a sleep recession. I'm so glad it's not me. Look at these bags. People are fighting sleep, getting poor sleep, and looking to cram more hours of awake time into their day. Um, and it's so bad that the CDC is calling insufficient sleep an actual public health epidemic. Now, I know this isn't a newsflash, but you need sleep. And you should be getting about seven to nine hours a night. Teens and kids need more. Toddlers and infants obviously need much more than that. Um, but you need seven to eight hours. So quick reminders for a better night's sleep. No caffeine after 12 noon. No screen time for an hour before you go to bed. It's really, really bad for falling asleep. Try to get to bed at the same time every night and set the stage with a cool, dark room. Now you're gonna wanna stay awake for my last two news bites because there's some hope in medical news. Scientists are making some real headway on an HIV vaccine. How amazing would that be? I, I could, could, would love to see this happen and see it happen soon. And it looks like we just might. Um, studies in monkeys are incredibly promising. And news, for, good news for Alzheimer's disease. Researchers in Cambridge have sort of piggybacked all of this unbelievable, excellent research that's been going on across the world. And they found a molecule that can actually, potentially, halt the disease progression of Alzheimer's, which um, could lead to really truly effective, wonderful, useful drug therapies for patients with Alzheimer's disease, which of course would mean the world to the five million Americans and their families who are suffering. Okay, that's it. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me catching up on the news to keep you healthy and up to date. Have a strong and healthy week. Take care.